Sunrise on the Manistee River. Here we are. Uh, it should have been spring, Jerry Lee, but we're kind of dressed like winter. Well, it's an early spring, Fred. An early spring, and we just have a little, little tinge of winter this morning. Well, we're going to be steelhead fishing here on the Manistee River with Jerry Lee, who runs one of these drift boats, and Russ Boonstra. You're a local up in this area. Well, close to local. Close to local. Well, you know this river like the back of your hand, and we're going to try to catch some of those steelhead. How's the fishing been? Fishing's been excellent. It's uh, tapered off slightly in the last few days because of the high water condition, but it's been excellent all winter. Well, what are the fish like? Are they fresh run? Are they been in the stream? Or what, what color are they going to be? You're going to get a mixture of fish. You're going to get bright fish. You're going to get the darker fish, the winter fish. There's a mixture of fish in the river. Now, I've heard that because of this early spring and because of the report like you just gave about excellent fishing, that the fishermen, especially up towards the dam, are lining the banks. They are. There were probably 50 to 75 fishermen there over the weekend, most taking some fish. Uh -huh. But they're all out waiting, fishing from the bank. They're all waiting. Not too many in drift boats like this. Jerry, what's the strategy? I've never fished a drift boat. You've been trying to get me to come with you for a while. So the rods are in holders in the front of the boat. Correct. You're going to be rowing? Right. The way the boat's designed, Fred, is to, the lack of water underneath you it goes, works up against the current. And there's very minimum amount of boat in the water, so it makes it easy for us rowing. But we'll be rowing actually against the current all the time, letting the plugs dig down in front of us. As we drift down slowly through right. the holes. Right, we'll work those holes from side to side and right on down to the tail out of these holes. And when a fish hits? He slams it. Slams right. it. Ed Groves. I can't gonna, wait. He's, he's going to take the first fish. And we're going to be back in just a moment. And we're going to have Ed Groves battling one of these big, frisky Manistee River steel hits. So you stay tuned. It's Thursday night. Time for Michigan Outdoors. From the rugged shore and woodland. The sun is now high over the Manistee River, gentlemen. <laughs> We've been fishing all morning. We put a good, good hard try at it. Now, I want to hear why we don't have anything to show for it. We want to know why you'd miss that first fish. <laughs> OK. We did have one hit. The fish was on briefly. But we went through runs on the river that had always paid off for you guys before. What's the worst day you've had so far this winter? Two. Two fish in a day. Well, Russ, what was the problem? Is it just the temperature? Temperature. It is. Temperature it's has to have a major factor in today's fishing, this morning's fishing. A couple days ago, it was like springtime. It was 50 to 60 degrees. Fish were much more active than they are today. So we hit a cold day like this, and it shuts them down. Could shut them down. OK, well, what we were doing is we were putting these bug plugs, drifting them back in the hole, and they were working. Right. We had four of them going. Eddie? We fished hard. We were fishing hard. We could have almost had one. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? It, I, don't, I just didn't think it had it in his mouth very well. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Well, that's our excuse from there. We wanted to be standing here right now and show you either a silvery female or a iridescent male with the red stripe down its side. So I think we're going to have to go to Tom Wolf's taxidermy studio, which we visited yesterday. Mm -hmm. And he's our Michigan Outdoors fish taxidermist of the year. He specializes in nothing but fish. I think there's where we're going to have to go right now if we want to see a steelhead. And the color on a Tom Wolf steelhead is, is really unmistakable. Tom, you're a master at painting fish. That's probably one thing that uh, most fish taxidermists have the most trouble with, would you say? I guess they probably do. Uh, painting it takes a great deal of knowledge. You have to examine your, your specimens that you're working with. Uh, it takes uh, a lot of practice. Mm -hmm. What are you doing right now? Show me what you're... We're basically putting on the base paint here on the fish, getting the, the fish back to a even coloration, a light green on the back of the fish, mm -hmm. uh, silver on the side, white on the underside of the fish. From there, we'll begin to put in detail work on the fins and the spots in the fish here. These will be put in the by hand. The spots here, you can hardly see them. The, the they are there, nothing. though. They are there. If you're careful and don't go, don't put too much paint over the top of them, mm -hmm. you can see these spots. Well, here's one on your workbench, a little war mouth. You can see how that has almost nothing on that. It, is doing a trout or a salmon, what, what kind is this? Is this a coho? This is a coho. OK. Is that a lot different than painting and working on a, a warm water fish? Uh, a little different in that most of the warm water fish have much, much more brilliant colors mm -hmm. to them. 
than uh, say the lake run coho here, which is basically a silverfish with a spot pattern over the green mm -hmm. back. Well, you, it looks like you uh, have a repair job here. You taking work from what other taxidermists? Yes, and... occasionally I do work like this for my what's good the, steady customers. What's the matter with this one? Uh, this fish has had a problem with uh, the paint releasing from the skin. There's a little too much oil in the skin. What uh, releasing? Oh, uh, like it just bubble? didn't stick well. The oh, paint yeah. went on, and then a short time afterwards, it released because of a large oil content in the skin. Oh, I see. So these oily yeah. fish, you have to take special care with, or the yes. paint bubbles up like that. You have to degrease them. This fish apparently was not left in the de in a degreasing solution long enough. Hmm. Well, here's a fish that is oily, a lake trout. What, are you, are you in process of painting this? Uh, this fish is in for a repaint. It was done by another taxidermist, and I'm going to go over and do some detail painting on the fish. There isn't much detail on it right now. No, it's basically, he left it about at the point where the base paint is on, and mm -hmm. now he needs to put the detail work in, uh, and he failed to do that. So you will bring the colors out and make it, for a lake trout, every bit as vibrant as this? Yes, sir, it should be. This, this should combo? look like a lake trout. Well, I wonder if we're doing this taping a day ahead of our steelhead fishing. What do you think the chances are that Ed Groves right now can be holding a fish right out of the water that looks like this? I would say it would be pretty good. I hope so. Oh, he's a big one. Yeah. He's a big one. Are we close enough, OJ? He's coming out. You have to get inside. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play it to the camera. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I just want to see y'all see him, that's all. That's okay. Just get down. Turn that net around, Fred. Uh oh. He's not ready. <laughs> oh, oh, right. Look at that. He's got a little spunk in him yet. Liable to come up here again, OJ. Keep, keep wide on that so you can. Right by the boat here. Yeah. Down below us here. Oh, he came clear out of the water. That's great. Was coming in pretty fast, Ed. I, I just, he just he just hanging out there. Deep hole here. He's going down, I think. There he, there is. he comes. Well, if we can get him. He's my net man. Oh. <laughs> oh, God, this is fun. <laughs> this is <Right>. fun. Stay close. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Kiss. Here he comes. Here he comes. Uh, yeah, you just keep his head up. Yeah, keep his head up. Keep He's coming in here. Far back so I can get him right there. Ooh, all right. All right. Hey. <laughs> that's the one. That's the one. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> that's what we've been looking for. What time is it? What time is it? It's time for it's a, a fish. You know, that's a prime rib dinner, too, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> All you right. Ready? Nice Brand cold. new hand. Yeah. Brand new hand. Hold him up there for the camera. Here's yeah. It. Hold him about like that. Can you get a shot of this, OJ? Yep. Oh. Now, this looks like a female. It is. A beautiful female. Female, but a beautiful fish. Nice, that fresh was, fish. That was fun. <laughs> that was fun. When it's right out of the water, when it's all done on the wall, is when it looks best, Ed. <laughs> right now, this steelhead that Tom Wolf has been working on is halfway through the process. What happens to the head, Tom, on these fish? The head shrinks badly on the trout and salmon species, and, and the whole upper section of the head has to be rebuilt. Boy, I guess so. How did that, what do you build that with? We use an epoxy body filler, do much the same as you'd use on a car fender. Huh, and fill that all in so it's smooth like it is on the, on the fish. Fill it in, sand, sand it out. out. Now, what about these fins? Is this backed up with cloth? You yes, it's, it's a cloth that we use to back the fin, and then it will receive a couple of layers of fiberglass resin sanded between coats. Now, you're holding a steelhead here that before the cloth is put on the right. fins. The cloth hasn't been put on these fins yet. This particular steelhead has a badly damaged yeah, fin there. What do you do there? Uh, in this case, I'm going to replace this fin. Oh. We have a fin over here. Oh, is that the what box. this box of fins is yeah, for? We have a box <laughs> of spare parts here. Uh -huh. And I will replace this fin here. Put that fin in with there. With this fin. Huh, that, that's easier to replace it with a spare fin than it is to fix it. In some cases where the fin is badly damaged, you're better off to actually replace the well, fin. How do the fins get damaged? Uh, due to netting, just general landing the fish practices. So if we want to have one of our steelhead mounted that we catch here uh, on the Manistee, we better slip it in the net gently. 
Well, you'd want to try and do it as gently as you can. Well, there's no fin damage here during the netting. We didn't have any trouble netting the fish. Good net man. <laughs> well, thank you, but we, we didn't have uh, an easy time catching one today, fellas. Very difficult. Jerry Lee, who said, come on down, the, the river's loaded with fish. Did you say your prayers to the fish <laughs> this morning, Fred? <laughs> I did something wrong. <laughs> but I tell you, I heard even from the sucker fishermen on the banks who said Sunday, they saw people down the river, some of them with 10 fish. Exactly. Well, we've taken 17 fish in the past three days up here. Yeah, and the sucker fishermen, too, that we talked to, they weren't doing very well today. So this cold snap has sort of... Has turned the fish off. Momentarily done it in. But I'd say from the looks of this fresh female up the streams, the steelhead run is on. Very definitely. Sucker run is on. Sucker run is probably nearly over with up here. We heard a bird that is going to be good news to a lot of hunters. We did. We heard a turkey gobbling this morning. That's uh, right. And you heard, which one have you heard, a grouse drumming? It's partridge drumming uh, Sunday. Looks like spring is here, although I you think couldn't it <laughs> prove it right now. We've been uh, fishing it well. We left about 7 this morning, and now it's 6 o'clock. We put our dues in. How many holes did we fish, Jerry? 18 to 20. We and, there anyway. and we worked them. We worked yeah. hard. Fished hard. Just... You fellas switched off rowing, and, uh, and we got you your... First, first steelhead, Ed. Yep, I'm happy. Special trophy for you, huh? Yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of small, but to me, beautiful fish. A steelhead from the stream is beautiful. One hanging on your wall that Tom Wolf has mounted is beautiful. The backside, I don't know, though, Tom. <laughs> That's it does of, look a little rough. It looks a little rough. You, there, you staple the skin to styrofoam, yeah. I guess. Staples, it look, they almost look like they're pulling out here. Mm -hmm. That's from the, the skin drying and shrinking a little bit. It draw, it'll actually draw those staples right sideways through the foam. Tightens up, so the fins are, you put staples right through the fins, right, too. Right, to hold the fins nice and flat, straight mm -hmm. while they dry. And what are all these? Again, things? to hold the head in place and what are they, keep they? things from moving around. They're long, four-inch upholstery pins. You know, you can almost see, is that the... There's a little oil, oil? residue. That'll have to be wiped out of it. So that oil comes right out of there. Well, that's interesting. Certainly, people would say, wouldn't want that hanging on my wall at all. But you know, the interesting thing about taxidermy is you take a fish like this, skinned out, almost like a towel, and Dale, Elsa, how do you do, Phil? Well, let me interrupt you here for a second, but uh, but let's talk about, you do the mounting for Tom. Right, I do most of the uh, mine of the fish, and uh, I work in the fin room too. Okay, and you spend most of your time, Tom, painting? painting. That's how you divvy it up? And working in the fin room. Okay, what are you together. working on here? Well, right now I'm working on the body to, to go to this bass right here. It's oh. uh, about a 15-minute job, and then I insert the body into the fish. What takes more time, mounting the fish, getting it to this stage, or painting it? It's about equal. That's, that's really. what I'd say. I'd say, yeah, uh, it's you have to have something good to start with the paint. If You, you know, a lot of people, uh, you see a lot of fish in the water, torpedoes. Yeah, you have I to have some curve about. in your body. You yeah. have to, to make it look, you know, for him to have the paint. So that's why you make a good team. Yeah, we work, work together. together. It's teamwork. Right. Well, look at this. This is what they've come up with, Tom and Dale. With This is really, I'd say, the typical award-winning mount. You had many award-winning mounts in that taxidermy exposition, Tom. And this type of mount right here is your trademark and the one that uh, named you, let me shake your hand on that, the Michigan Outdoors Fish Taxidermist of the Year. Thank you for 1983. that. 1983. Tremendous. Of course, the characteristics are the lily pads. Where do these come from? Well, we hand make the lily pads. Hand make them? Right. Uh, like how? They're made from a casting off of a live lily pad. <laughs> That's and incredible. in polyester resin. So you even taxidermy the, uh, the right. lily pads. Right. This is, this, the painting, the body work, the uh, allure that mm -hmm. the fish is chasing. Those are all characteristics of your mouth. This is the top of the line in we, this state. We try and recreate, in this case, the moment of strike. Ah, that's beautiful. If you folks would like to meet Tom and Dale, talk to them this weekend. Come to the Blue Water Fishing and Outdoor Show up in Port Huron. You're going to be there with the booth. Mm -hmm. You're going to have your award-winning mounts. You can talk to this man who does what we've judged to be the best fish taxidermy in the state for 1983. Come out and see him there, and right now, Tom, we're going to show our viewers some of your award-winning mounts while we go to Ed Groves with the outdoor calendar. Well, you may be disappointed like I am that there's a momentary lull in our spring fishing and spring activities due to this cold snap, but there's a lot going on in our outdoor calendar. One of the things this weekend that would be very interesting if you're in the Ann Arbor area is to go to the Briarwood Hilton and meet our Michigan Outdoors Artist of the Year, including the grand champion, I guess we're going to call you, Rob Gwynn. Rob is a fellow 
who won in the habitat category and in the grouse category, making you the only artist that won in two categories. The amazing thing is that Rob only entered two paintings, and one out of 200 got it narrowed down, and the public voted your paintings the best in those two categories. Your painting by the judges was voted the best of show, this grouse painting right here. Mm -hmm. I mean, congratulations. Well, what you. can we say except a lot of people, including other artists, are saying, how does he do it? What is it about this painting that well, a, everybody seems to love? There's a couple of uh, variables that I try and bring out in my work. Uh, the first being detail, mm -hmm. and the sec be second being mood. Uh, I think mood plays a strong part in you know, what the public like. Uh, well, your mood print, obviously, that really does a job on the mood is the habitat print here with the geese. The, the geese has a lot of mood, very little detail. Mm -hmm. But it's Strong an extremely mood. popular one. People go for that mood. Mm -hmm. And that, was, that looks like the UP. Yeah, as a matter of fact, it's uh, a setting that I, that I actually uh, saw up in the Upper Peninsula. And I didn't see the geese flying mm -hmm. through. I added the geese later. Well, that's because you're an artist. That's one of the advantages <laughs> of painting. Right. We can't do that with videotape or photos or anything else. But, of course, this brings up the point, what were you doing in the UP? Why do you do geese and ducks and grouse? Who is Rob Gwynn? Well, uh, I, first of all, paint wildlife because I love the outdoors. Mm -hmm. And because of my love of the outdoors, I do a lot of grouse hunting and duck hunting. I'm outdoors any time I'm not in the studio. Uh, so the geese is, is just um, a painting that I, that I saw in my mind through actually being there. And the same thing is true with the grouse. I would suspect that you're probably close to being a grouse hunting fanatic. Oh, boy, that's very <laughs> true. Well, this... That's very true. Let's talk just for a second about this haze, the mist, that seems to be characteristic, sort of a trademark of Rob Gwynn's work. That's right, Fred. It's, it's developed itself to be a trademark uh, for me. And I think it's um, because of uh, the fact that it... That it I try and bring it across so that it looks real, mm -hmm. uh, so that it's not a, a heavy, uh, a heavy mist. You know, mist well, a lot is of, light. A lot of people ask, "How do you do that?" Well, I bet a lot of other artists would like to lay that in in the background, figure they'd have oh, an yeah, instant I'm, winner. I'm asked that quite a bit. Do, uh, do you a, answer? It's a technique. Oh, sure. It's it's not any big secret. Uh, it's just a little secret. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're not going to really answer this directly. But this is Rob Gwynn's work. Let's quickly just take a look at a couple of the other uh, paintings here from some of the uh, other winners. Here we have one by Rod Lawrence, uh, our trout print, exquisite detail, like you were talking, detail is very important. Heavy detail. Chuck Denault with his white tail print, white tail winner. Again, detail throughout. Uh, Nick von Frankenheisen. Works for the DNR Magazine, art director with his wild turkeys. Of course, over there is Dave Morehart's print. He's from Berrien Springs. Uh, exquisite detail there on the green wing teal. Yeah, this but, is an exceptional painting here. It's, and, of course, we have, this brings us back to detail and mood. Rob Gwynn, our, really our outdoor artist of the year. Congratulations, Rob. Thanks again. I Fred. hope people can get down and meet you at the Hilton CS at Port Huron and partake of all these outdoor activities. See you folks next week.